my name's Emma and I'm the Clinical Nurse Consultant at RWL. Thinking about well-being, we often consider it to be a treat or a luxury, and we have to stop viewing it this way. Well-being is essential for living a healthy and happy life. We've often thought of health as being two separate silos, how we physically feel and how we emotionally feel, and yet they're really tightly tied together. If you don't get a great night's sleep, you're far more likely to feel down and low the next day. Equally, if you're feeling down and low and stressed, you're way more likely to catch a common cough or a cold. So you have to look after your physical health and your emotional well-being. However, the words we use around self-care often reinforce the idea that it's indulgent. We even talk about it being an indulgence. Therefore, how do you make the time in your day to make sure you're putting self-care and your well-being first? The most important step is having a really severe talk with yourself. As I said, we often think about self-care as being a treat. And until you mentally have that conversation with yourself, allowing yourself to put self-care up at the top of your agenda, you'll continue to bin it off in favour of things that you think are more important. So it's a crucial first step. You then need to think about what self-care actually looks like for you. It's not the same for any two people. Some people find reading a book really nice, some people enjoy watching a film, having a soak in the bath, or going for a run. We also sometimes assume that self-care means spending time alone. For some people, self-care and relaxing means spending time with others, having a cuddle, having a meal together. They're all really important parts of keeping yourself well. Getting a great sleep routine and thinking about how you move physically are some quick tricks to getting yourself feeling well. Making sure you're going to bed at a similar time each night ensures that you get a good night's sleep and that you're ready for the day. And how we move can help produce more happy hormones. For example, if you go for a walk outside, the vitamin D helps increase the amount of serotonin you produce and being moving and getting moving, that helps you produce more dopamine. These are two hormones that help regulate your moods. Plus, if you're at home with the kids or family members, they can go too and it can become a family exercise. It's really important to impress upon those around you the importance of well-being. So doing exercises together that can imp improve well-being are also really nice ways to progress. Things like taking pictures of the moments that you're living in and enjoying the adventure that is life, reflecting on those, are great ways to remember that actually today you had a great day, regardless of what happened.